I want you to give it up for Robo Bitch. Welcome to Robocop, where this dude plays Alex Murphy, a detective in the DPD. Disappearing penis dude. Detroit Police Department. But first, introduce to Samuel Jackson, who plays a dickhead TV show host. And in this world, America has cut down crime significantly around the world using law enforcing robots. But these robots are all around the globe except for in America. So they basically fucked over the entire planet except for themselves. Why fucked over, you say? Because, well, law enforcing robots are annoying as fuck. So this dude at the Pentagon lets Novak, the dickhead TV show host, watch a live feed of a random patrol that the robots are doing in the Middle East somewhere. We found that random random patrols help the local population to feel safer and to trust us. No it doesn't you dumbass, it just makes them hate you even more. All the while they're watching this random patrol, Novak is like, It's amazing. <laughs> Incredible. In Incredible. Forget it dude, you really like these robots. But then the search goes to shit when they get attacked by some robot hating dudes and a giant ass robot kills a kid wielding a knife. What kind of dumbass robot is this that would think that a mere teenager wielding a fucking kitchen knife would be a threat to this giant behemoth of death and destruction. Anyway, Novak has a hard on for these robots and is in total favor of repealing something called the Dreyfus Act, which is the only thing keeping this shit from happening in America. Back to Alex. He's not a cover cop. He's trying to buy some guns with his partner, some illegal guns. Let me see your I'm phone. not showing you my phone, man. You recording this? Think you're a goddamn Yo, cop. What the hell are you talking table? about, man? About <laughs> ah, I get it, I get it. It's funny because he's not the cover cop and he's accusing the gun seller, illegal gun seller, of being on the cover cop. But he's actually on the cover cop. And, you know, I get it, I get it. They find the supplier of these illegal guns and they try to strike a deal with him. But in the middle of the meeting, the illegal gun seller or supplier, bad guy, finds out that they are on the cover cops and he orders his men to kill them. So Alex's partner gets shot and put in hospital. Cut to Mr. Sellers, the guy who creates these crime fighting robots. And his research team, problem solving team assistants, think tank. Whatever they are, they are comprised of this bitch and that bastard. And they're trying to come up with an idea to get the Americans to like the idea of having a law enforcing robot in their country. Because America is a great big source of that sweet, sweet moolah. And every second that law is in existence, they are hemorrhaging money. Hey, shut the fuck up, dude. You're making 44 billion off of South America alone. Be grateful, yo. And what? You're making nearly 3.5 billion off of Antarctica? What the sh- What kind of crime is there in Antarctica? They decide that it's gonna be a good idea to put a man inside a machine, so Sellers goes to the super smart Dr. Norton, and he tells him the idea, and Dr. Norton refuses, saying that he doesn't want to develop combat implication, but Sellers is like he'll be saving countless of lives. So Dr. Norton's like, hmm, I like that. So he's on board. Moving on, some corrupt cops meet the bad guy that put Alex's partner in hospital, and they give him the address and location of the room to kill him, but he refuses saying, Kill a cop, look at all my shoulder the rest of my life, not good for business. The fuck dude, literally 10 minutes ago you said, Make sure you kill them both! Make up your mind pussy, but apparently a few seconds later he's dead set on killing them, and he puts a bomb in Alex's car, but then proceeds to leave his partner alone to recover, like, it's kind of confusing. Anyway, Alex goes back to his family. He bonds with them a bit, and then he's about to have some sex times with his wife. Oh wait, no, he's gonna have sad boy hours. Oh, wait, 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 he's gonna have sex at times. But then he's cock blocked by his car alarm going nutsos, okay? So he goes down to check out the car and why the fuck this is happening, and the car blows up. Which begs the question, why the fuck didn't he blow us up at the hospital? I mean, you could have blown up the wife. I mean, she could have gone down to check on the car. Which, considering how this movie turns out, will be much better for you. Because then you're only gonna have one angry cop after you instead of one angry super cop after you. Later on, Frank Sinatra's playing. Alex is dreaming. And then he wakes up in a lab in China. Because fucking everything is made in China nowadays. And he wakes up as Robocop. Okay? And he starts freaking out. Then he heads for the hills, tries to run away. But they shut him down and bring him back. Um, by the way, that's a hell of a lucky way to land. Because if he landed on his face, he'd be drowning right now. So they bring him back to the lab and Dr. Norton's like, you have to face the reality of the situation and he shows him what he looks like. And basically, what's left of him is a pair of lungs, one hand, and his head. You couldn't even salvage his penis? Okay, if you couldn't salvage his penis, you could have at least given him some sort of cool ass robo dick or something. So then this bald prick, who was apparently their combat specialist or weapon specialist or whatever, he hates the fact that they're putting humans into robots. He thinks it's a stupid idea and in turn hates Alex. But he is tasked with running some tests between Alex and a normal combat robot and they find out that the robot is much faster than Alex because fear and bias and whatever always is present in a human and it always fuck with the system. And Sellers doesn't like that, he says it's not good enough. So he tells the doctor to go fuck off and fix him. So what does the doctor do? He goes and fiddles with his brain a little bit and removes all the emotions so they don't interfere with his decision making process when he's in combat mode. So basically the machine is doing all the work but making Alex think that he's making all the decisions, which is illegal as fuck. But Sellers is like, fuck it, it's great! So then they run another test, this time it's in real life, and it's Alex versus the Bali and his small army of robots. And Alex proceeds to swiftly wipe them out and 
and whoop his ass. So Alex wins a ticket back home to see his family. And why did you not give him a robo dick? Come on, dude, give him a magnum dong. I'm out of here. Then he goes to see his partner, and his partner's like, at least you're the right color now, which brings up a great question. Does he have the N-word pass? Next day comes, and they're about to make a big reveal with Mr. Sellers, the mayor, and a bunch of normal folk. But just before the big reveal, they decide to shove the entire DPD database inside Alex's head. Come on! Even I, with the fucking two brain cells, have a collective IQ of three. No, that's a horrible idea. You're gonna overwhelm the dude, and he's gonna fucking die or something. So they start uploading the information into Alex's brain, and he starts getting overwhelmed, just like I said. But then he comes across his own crime scene. Then he starts having a seizure and tells his bitches like, yo, doc, fix this shit right now. The doc fucks with his brain a little bit more and lowers the dopamine inside his head so low that he's basically not even human anymore. He goes up on stage and he doesn't even shake the mayor's hand or anything. He doesn't even say hi to his own son. Instead, he starts scanning everybody, see if they're a threat or not, even his fucking child. Then he moves on to the crowd and starts scanning them and amidst the crowd he finds a dude that is wanted for rape and murder and then he arrests him right then and there. And of course Novak's like, ah shit, that's amazing. So Sellers cancels all the interviews that he has lined up for Alex, but keeps him on the street because he's too big of a hit to take off. Then Alex goes into his first day of work. He selects a few criminals and targets to arrest, and then he goes to arrest them and tears shit up on the way. All the while not feeling any emotion. Zero. Dude is stone cold. He feels nothing. Nada. Zero. Nada quisto. Zilch. Null. Zero. Uh, what's French for zero? I don't know. Anyway, Norton feels horrible about this, and Dickhead Sellers tells Dickhead Ball Guy to spy on Norton. Then he fucks off to Washington to have a really biased ass interview with Novak. All the while this is happening, Alex's wife has been denied access to him for a long ass time, and she's fed up with all this bullshit. So she catches him right before he leaves for work and tells him that his kid is sad, she is sad, and that she really, really needs him. But his 2% dopamine ass just drives off. But on the way, while he's driving off, he starts to feel something, and he starts undoing what Dr. Norton did to him, hence becoming more and more human. So he goes off and tries to solve his own murder. Murder, and would you take a look at that thick robo ass? And the police chief is like, yo, he's breaching protocol, he's solving his old murder. And this guy's like, that is genius. Why didn't I think of that? Because you're an idiot. So Alex is on his way to the bad guy's evil lair, and the bad guy tells his henchman to aim for Alex's head. But while fighting, Alex protects the lower part of his face, which is the only vulnerable part of his head. Which is a detail I really like, because in most movies where a person has some sort of protective armor that doesn't cover his face, they never shoot there and they never even address the fact that his face is not covered in a totally vulnerable spot. And yes, yeah, sure, he only covers it this once, but hey, at least they thought of it. Good job, movie. Back to the action. Alex tears shit up in the evil guy's lair, but he gets shot in the head, but don't matter, because he just rides up Undertaker style, and then unloads an entire magazine into the evil guy, in glorious bastard style. Then he goes and scans the guns for some prints and finds out that they belong to some cops in his precinct, or his department. So he goes back there and confronts them, and they tell him that the police chief has also been on this and is a major reason for all the shit that's been happening to him. So he goes there and starts confronting her, but in the middle of getting a confession, bald guy shuts him down. Bald guy's a dick. And Mr. Sells is like, oh, this is a great opportunity to kill off Alex Murphy. So the news breaks out that Alex uncovered a giant ring of dirty cops inside the DPD, but in doing so, he's kind of dying right now, which is a lie. He's not dying. He's completely fine. And America has voted to repeal the Dreyfus Act. So Sellers orders Dr. Norton to kill Alex, but instead Dr. Norton goes and frees Alex and removes the transmitter from his head so they can't remotely shut him down anymore and explains to him all the shit's been going down and what Sellers has been doing. And he's like, don't worry, I can fix it. But Alex is like, fuck you, I'm going to fix this myself. Meanwhile, Mr. Sellers got Alex's wife over because she's been stirring some shit up on the news, some very accurate shit, and he's like, your husband went apeshit, had a seizure, and died. Then he goes on the news to make it official. But no, Alex is on his way to fuck his shit up, dog. So he goes up to the roof and waits for a helicopter and takes Alex's wife with him and tells her that the organic part of your husband is dead, but the robotic part has come back to life and is shooting up the building, coming up to kill us. Imagine that shit, like, your dad is dead, but his body is coming up to kill you. That kid is gonna have some issues, man. Alex arrives at the building, and he faces off the giant fuck off robots, who can obliterate them in seconds if they all focus them down at the same time. But Alex is smart, you see. He stands underneath them and uses the old why you hitting yourself tactic. But that only works for so long, and when he takes one of them down, it falls on his arm, incapacitating him. So what he does is he just fucking shoots his arm off because it's just a stupid hunk of metal and tries to run away. But while doing that, all the robots try and focus him down and he's about to fucking die. But in that moment, his old partner comes. You see, Norton went to the fucking police station and told his partner what was going on so he can come and save him right now. Rams on the robots, stands in front of the rest of them, and they stop shooting because they can't shoot an unarmed officer. Alex moves forwards and then finds another boss. Another character he has to defeat. Yep, it's Bald Guy, okay? And Bald Guy's wearing a bracelet that makes him a red acid, which basically means that he's untouchable and Alex can't shoot him. So what happens? His partner shoots him instead. Good job, partner. So now Alex can make it to the roof and he scares off the helicopter from landing and he tells his family to step aside and these guys to get on the ground. I'm just from marketing. Oh, you're marketing. 
Oh, and she's legal. Oh, I get it now. I get it. So Seller starts to threaten Alex while he's wearing the red asset bracelet. So if Alex tries to shoot him, his just his system. Wow, his shish kebab. His system will shut down. And try as he might, Alex can't do shit. But Sellers makes one big mistake and he threatens Alex's family. And that gives Alex enough willpower and strength to pull his arm up and pull the trigger, killing Sellers. Next up, they rebuild Alex. And is it really too much to ask for a gentleman sausage? You have the technology, Norton. Give the man a peepee. -pee. Anyway, Alex sees his wife and kid. The president decides to keep the Dreyfus Act and Novak goes apeshit on America. All in all, great movie. 10 out of 10. Should have given him a penis though. I mean, you know he's gonna ask for it eventually.